Kadena, a scalable proof of work layer one solution. Do the tokenomics stack up on this project to make it a worthwhile investment? So here is the deep dive of the tokenomics. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. As always, check out the links in the description. If you buy Kadena and any other token, you can do so using Bybit or BitGet. Links in the description. Take advantage of those. When you're investing in any project, one of the first things you need to be doing is taking a deep dive of the tokenomics. You can have a great, great project doing great things with exciting fundamentals, which by the way, I break down the fundamentals in a video, which I'll link up here so you can catch up on that as well. But if the tokenomics do not stack up, you can have a failing project ahead of you. And there are many examples of projects where the tokenomics have not stacked up. So it's always important to use this step-by-step -step checklist that I'm going to walk you through to do this a fundamental analysis on any of your favorite projects. First things first, and again, if you guys are slightly more experienced, you have to forgive me for kind of walking you through this, but I think it's really important refresher for all of us to understand the difference between price and value. And I always start off my tokenomic videos like this because the reality is you can have a project where the price is very low and anybody who's new to crypto and there's a new crypto investor board every single day, they always look at the price, right? And Shiba and SafeMoon and all these guys use the same trick where they create a minuscule price and it distracts people from the reality of what is market cap. Market cap is what the value of that project is. It's the market cap that you want to go up for the value of your investment to go up. Okay, very, very important. Market cap is equal to your supply. How many coins are in circulation multiplied by the current price? Let's plug this in for Cadena's numbers now. So as you can see with Cadena, what we've currently got is 198 million coins in circulating supply. The current price for Cadena is $1.27. When you multiply those together, you get a market cap of 251 million. So if I want Cadena to 10x, if I've invested in this because somebody said this is going to 10x, I need that 251 million market cap to go to 2.5 billion. That is the fundamental thesis. Okay, that's really important. So it doesn't matter what the price of your coin is. It could be no point, no, 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 no. But if there's a quadrillion circulating in supply, you can see that the market cap can already be too high. And it's really important that we understand this. Otherwise, we won't be able to value coins. And that's what we're going to do right now for Cadena. What I've done is I've listed this out and I've started off with the current multiple. And that is the Cadena price today, which is $1.27. And we're sitting today at a market cap of roughly $250. I've used round numbers to make it super easy here. Now, if we want to 10x, because everybody says, oh, this coin's going to 10x, what does that mean? What does it actually mean? Well, what that means is they believe the market cap is going to go from 250 million to 2.5 billion. And we're going to look at what that means shortly. And that will therefore give you that 10x in price to $12.70, which is what you are looking for when you invest. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. If we want it to 100x, well, then you're looking at $127 right? On your coin, on your Cadena token. But that would mean you need a market cap of 25 billion. So hopefully you're understanding what this means in terms of the dynamics between market cap and what that means for your investment. So just like any other asset class, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, whether it's anything else, you need comparable projects to value your current project. If you're trying to value Cadena, and I know it's always difficult because every single project is different, you want to find things which are similarly comparable that you can look at the valuation and say, oh, how are Cadena doing versus that project? So what I've done is I've put a few different examples here, which we can compare against. And the first, and these are all current market cap prices during the bear market. So currently during the bear market, Bitcoin is sitting at a market cap of around 367 billion, okay? So you can see here, a thousand X here on Cadena brings you to 250 billion, okay? Which is still lower than Bitcoin's bear market Market, market cap. And you know that Bitcoin's managed to get to over a trillion previously. Now, of course, this is not taking into account any of the emissions. I'm going to come on to that shortly, what that means, because that's an important thing for us to take into account. Now, Ethereum is currently sitting at 159 billion. Okay? You've got BNB sitting at 43 billion. Again, a good layer one solution. Cardano, a good layer one solution. Recently launched a smart contracts platform, 12 billion. You've got Solana, a lot of outages, a lot of problems, but very fast, very uh, high transactions and throughput, 10 billion. Polkadot with their parachains, which is similar to the chain web concept over at uh, Kadena, sitting at 6.5 billion. Avalanche, 
4.6 billion with their subnets. Near Protocol with their scalability, 2.3 billion. So I've put a broad range of different layer one solutions which we can compare. So straight away out of the gate, you can see that the, a lot of these platforms are already much, much larger than Kadena in terms of market cap. And understandably, Kadena is still very early in its journey. And obviously we're in the depths of a bear market where price is getting absolutely crushed. So we look at it and we say, okay, well, if we want to do a 10X and get to 2.5 billion, would you make an argument that that's 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 overreaching? Well, near protocol, who are also on a similar journey, still quite early in their journey, are sitting here at 2.3 billion, which is close enough during a bear market. So to argue that when things don't improve or when the market don't start picking up that um that Kadena can't do a 10x from here, I think comfortable, pretty certainly, you'd expect a 10x. And I think the team over at Kadena would consider a really bad job if they weren't able to get that as a bare bare minimum. Then I'll push it and say, what about the 50x? What about the 50x that takes you to 12.5 billion and gives you a token price of $63 on your Cadena. Well, now you get to a slightly more juicier price point and it puts you around the Solana and Ada territory. But again, I would argue, why is this not possible? In a market where you've got Solana with a lot of a lot of downtime, a lot of issues, yes, they've got VCs and, and, and some major people backing them. Then you've got Cardano, again, a really big ecosystem, loyal, loyal fan base. And I hold both these projects, but they're sitting in that 10 to 12 billion range. So you make the argument that in a bull run, both these projects have been far are higher than that. They've been up at 50, 60, 70 billion range. Why in that in that type of a market where they're even pushing past their all-time highs, so they'd want to be well past 50, 60, 70 billion. They've got their own roadmaps, which they want to eclipse. Why could it be that Cadena can't get up to that 12 billion market cap and deliver a 50x? And again, that's a figure I would say the Cadena team would be very disappointed if they weren't able to achieve. And this is what makes this so exciting in terms of how the numbers stack up. And obviously I'm gonna have a few caveats which I'm gonna bring in later on. Then I wanna look at the 100X. And the 100X is where people start to get excited because it's giving you $127 uh, Cadena token and it, you're sitting at a 25 billion market cap. But again, this is not crazy. There are so many projects where I've done this tokenomic analysis and I and I do the multiples and it just doesn't stack up. You're getting crazy trillion dollar prices here in terms of market cap. But here are 25 billion for 100X on Cadena. I mean, I look at that and go, you know what? In a in a bull market, I know it's 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 easy to forget what a bull market is like because we're in the middle of a bear market. But in a bull market where money is being thrown everywhere, where Bitcoin is breaking through 1.5 trillion, when Ethereum is trying to get to a trillion itself and get to that 10K, 12K mark, right? Then you've got the likes of Cardano, Solana pushing on, trying to break. Why could it be uh, Cadena can't get to 25 billion? That's half of Binance Smart Chain's market cap now in a bear market, okay? It's not even close to like a sixth of Ethereum's, right? It's not even, so you of in the bear market again. So this is what you've got to look at and say, you know what? That is, if you're looking at 100X to hold Cadena for a long time and ride this through to the next bull run and a few cycles, maybe even like four or five year roadmap, what, you know, that is sitting there at 100x, which would not be a terrible bet, in my opinion. Of course, do your own research. Then you want to look at the 1000x. And normally when I sit there doing the 1000x, I use this as, a, as an example to say, guys, you're crazy, right? Because what happens is when I make these tokenomics videos, I always say, guys, you've been told that your favorite coin's going to 1000x. Everybody wants this 1000x. But when you do the math like this, normally you see it's out of reach. But what I'm seeing here is I'm not seeing it too out of reach. Yes, they have to go and execute and do amazing things to get to 250 billion. But what I can illustrate from this down below is it's possible. A lot of things will have to go its way over the next four, five, six years. But if you're holding this as a long-term bet, as a moonshot, tr you know, trying to deliver on at least your 50, 100x range to secure your investment, but then hoping, and, and if things go right, if mass adoption occurs in crypto, if Bitcoin is running past its all-time highs, Ethereum trying to cross the 1 trillion mark, at that point, could Cadena not at least be a quarter of Ethereum's market cap at that point? You can make the argument, right? It's not completely crazy. And that is why I put that there to say, you know what? If you had a moonshot, that is there. But you never account for in your investment thesis that you need that moonshot. This should just be that. It should be a bonus. What you should be investing on is based on the fact that, can I secure my money? Can I at least get my money back? Ideally, can I get a 10x? Now, it'll be brilliant if I can get between a 50 and 100x and then your moonshot is anything beyond that. Okay, that's the way I like to think. And of course, you have your own uh, way of doing that. Okay, now we need to come to a few interesting caveats, let's call them, which I think is uh, important. Because one, you could do that exercise on the surface level. I think it's always really important to do that exercise to uh, to just um, calibrate your thinking in terms of what can I actually achieve in, the, in these investments. It helps put it clear in your mind. But 
if you look at the circulating supply of Cadena, you've got 200 million tokens in circulating supply. You should always then go check what is the max supply. You can check this on CoinMarketCap and you'll see it's 1 billion KDA as a max. So that means if you divide one by the other, you've got 20% of the tokens in the market. This is a major red flag for me straight away. Okay, now I'm going to come on to why there are certain reasons why this may be okay. But straight away, just doing this simple calculation, as I do with many other projects, this would raise a flag for me, for something for me to investigate. Okay, because you want this to be quite high. Why would you want this number to be quite high? Well, the remaining 80% are going to be released in what is called a release schedule or emissions. Right, so each project will say, okay, this is what's currently circulating. And every year or month, this is what's going to be released onto the open market. Now, if you have a lot of tokens to be released into the open market, in this case, 80% more of the supply, then what happens is this forms a downward pressure on the price. Okay? Imagine every time the price of Cadena goes on a positive move, people are selling. Goes on a positive move, people are selling. You just have that downward pressure, which reduces the pumpability. I made that word up, the pumpability of this project. Okay, And that's what made me a little bit worried when I initially saw this. But then I had to do a deeper dive. And let's go and take a look in order to understand that. Now, the other caveat I want to share, and again, it's related to what I just shared with you in terms of circulating supply, is you always want to look at the fully diluted market cap. So when I sort of showed you that the market cap is currently 250 million, and you want to do a 10x from here to get to 2.5 billion, well, you also need to understand that we need to look at the fully diluted market cap. And the fully diluted market cap assumes what is the value of this project if all the coins were in circulating supply? Now, I'm going to show you why that's not 100% important right now, but it's something you want to look at. So 1.26 billion is the fully diluted market cap. And you can compare this, similar to how we just did earlier in this video, to the fully diluted market caps of other projects to give you an idea. But I'm going to show you why you may not want to do that as well. Then we want to look at, and I've not forgotten about those, I'm going to cover off those points for you, but then we've got to look at the token allocations. So when the project started at Genesis, how were the tokens allocated amongst the different stakeholders. What you can see is 70% go to miners. And so you straight away, you can see that's not something to argue about. That is good, right? You want to reward the miners. It's a proof of work network. If there are not block rewards, like we've seen with Bitcoin, it doesn't create the sustainability. The value of the network is the value of the combined computational power. And that is not going to exist if you're not giving good mining rewards. Then you want to look at the platform and 20% goes to the platform. Again, I cannot complain about this. When you talk platform, we're talking the developer and economic grants. We're talking community initiatives, ecosystem initiatives. This is what's going to create value in the project. If you don't have a fund to offer grants to attract the best app developers, your layer one doesn't exist. Right now, the whole battleground around who's going to win the layer one battle is about who finds the best app developers. There are the next Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerbergs and all these guys ready to build world-changing dApps on different layer one solutions. And some of these layer one solutions, whether it's Cardano, whether it's Solana, whether it's Phantom, whether it's Cadena, whether it's any other one, are gonna manage to attract these people. And those layer one platforms are gonna skyrocket with it. Okay, so it's really important that you're, you have enough funds in the ecosystem to attract these dApp developers. And that's what this 20% platform share is. Then you wanna look at this bit. You've got, I think it was about a few percent which get burnt here. You've got 3% uh, which uh, go to contributors. You've got 6% which go to the investor and strategic. Uh, and that is, that's okay. That's not crazy, right? For 6% and 3% there, to put that into context, you were to look at Solana's when I last checked, it was 62% went to the team and VC. You had 61% at Avalanche go to the team and VC members. So relatively here, this is not heavily skewed and they've also locked some of theirs as well with a cliff, which is good. Okay, so not too, not too shabby there. I'm pretty happy with that. That gets the pass there. Now we want to look at the release schedule. And this is what we we're talking about in terms of the circulating supply. So if the circulating supply was 20% and all of the next 80% was to come out in the next few years, I'd be very worried because the token I'm fundamentally investing in today will be very undervalued in two years time when there's a whole bunch dumped on the market. If they're locked up for much longer, like you can see in this case, okay, let's just pop me out of the way here. You can see that the mining emission is set to finish by 2040. Okay, you can see that that's set to finish by 2040 and it just scales up across there. But that's not as bad. Now, remember, there are two types of emissions. You've got your mining emissions and then you have your platform share. So the two I shared with you on that pie chart, 
the mining emissions, which makes up that percentage of that portfolio. And then you've got your platform share, the 20%. So then let, let's look at what is happening with the platform share. Initially, there was two different variations of this. So they started off with this. And this is what initially had me worried. This was the initial one. When I first looked at the project, when they launched, I looked at this was like, oh, this is not great, guys. This is not great. Because by 2025, all the platform emissions were going to be complete. So they, you were looking at 2025 getting to 400 million in circulating supply. To put that into context, we're sitting at about 200 million now, right? We're sitting at 200 million now. So you're doubling, doubling in, in other words, 100% inflation by 2025, which is a couple of years, right? That's not great for an investment. That's not great at all. And if you invested a couple of years ago, the circulating supply was what, 50? It was even less. Okay, so you're looking at a major ramp up and in, in inflation. Now, since they have made some improvements to this and they have adjusted, adjusted the schedule, which makes it much more bearable. So now this schedule brings you to 500 million, okay, which is half the circulating supply here by 2030, which is far more bearable in terms of your position. So if you're looking to enter a position and you're looking to exit in a couple of years, you've got that space where you're not suddenly having this massive cliff where loads are being dumped onto the market and it makes it more bearable. But of course, this cannot just simply not exist. You want this to be emitted because if you don't have mining rewards, people will not be mining. You have no value in the Cadena network. If you don't have platform emissions, you're not rewarding grants, you're not improving the ecosystem, you're going to have a ghost chain. So it's really important that these exist, but the gradient, the rate at which this is coming out is really important. So I'm, I'm happy to see that they've made this adjustment here. Now, currently, the inflation rate is about, if we take a look at the latest uh, blog post that they did share on their media, you can see that at mining, initially in launch in November 2019, they were doing about 2 million tokens per month. They then adjusted it. So now that you're selling at 1.94 million tokens a month. And by 2025, this will fall to 1.69 a month. So at the current rate of about 1.9 million a month, you can do the math and you can see that that is about 24 million tokens uh, a year, which is putting you at roughly 12% inflation currently. Now, that's not great, but it's not the end of the world either. I mean, if you look at the likes of Bitcoin, if you look at the likes of Ethereum, in their early years, they had major inflation rates, and then it settles down thereafter. And that is what you're hoping to see here in Kadena. The first few years will have a lot of inflation, and then you hope for it to settle down and, and cool off later on. So there you have it, guys. There is my deep dive on the tokenomics of Kadena. If you appreciate this type of content, then make sure you smash the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything else which you want to dive into for Kadena, make sure you let me know in the comments. Overall, I like the tokenomics i don't think they're terrible yes the circulating supply isn't great i like to see projects which straight out of the bat have 70 percent, 80 percent out in circulating supply but i also understand why they're going that way i also understand that this is an important platform which is proof of work it's not proof of stake therefore they need to reward with mining emissions and they need that platform emissions to make sure they can actually attract the best app developers. It's a highly competitive space, the layer one space, and uh, Kadena need that set up. For me currently, am I adding this to my portfolio? Yes, I want to add a small position of Kadena in my portfolio as a hedge to all the other layer one solutions I have, right? I've got all these other layer one solutions which are primarily proof of stake. And now you've got pretty much the only standout layer one scalable proof of work platform, which now has a little bit of a history. They've got a proven track record. They've managed to double the number of chains, which by the way, if you want to get a deep dive of the fundamentals and understand what I'm just talking about, you want to click here, you want to watch that video and understand exactly what are the things that Kadena have managed to do from a fundamental perspective. Don't forget to smash the likes, don't forget to subscribe, check out Bybit and BitGet, links in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.